Hello YouTube, welcome to Open TTD with Leutnant Joker. And we're back in Günzburg and our passenger network is still making profit. You didn't miss anything, didn't do anything off camera, except look at the game map a little bit. And yeah, I'm not gonna pause the game since we're still in the first year. No need to save time, we have lots of time still. Now, I actually was going to uh, look for something that I'm gonna explain to you first a little on the industry chains. Now, the FRS, um, the, uh, I don't actually know what the F stands for, but it means industry replacement set. Now, there is a chain in the original game, you have uh, coal mines and iron ore mines, which are pretty much primary industries that just produce stuff. Or like a forest, that just produces stuff, they don't need anything. Then you produce that, that coal and that iron ore, you, you put that somewhere to a secondary industry. For these two uh, raw materials, for example, a, a steel mill. And a steel mill is something that is a secondary industry. It takes a resource or multiple resources and turns them into a uh, more refined resource. In this case, steel. You take iron ore, you take coal and you turn it into steel. And then you have the uh, tertiary industries which take that uh, secondary goods, that secondary resource and turn it into goods. And those goods you deliver to cities and cities grow and everybody's happy. Here it works a little differently. You can also deliver stuff to cities, I think. Yeah, you definitely can. But there's also a little uh, chain going on because you have chains like, for example, um, yeah, you have oil wells. Oil wells, of course, produce a certain amount of oil that you put to a, get to an oil refinery. And an oil refinery, let me actually check what it is really like. An uh, oil refinery has certain chemicals going on. And also produces petrol. And petrol is accepted by a machine shop. And a machine shop produces engineering supplies. And now it comes engineering supplies you can deliver back to the oil wells to increase their production now i can show you that if i quickly find some oil wells i think i saw some over here somewhere yeah there we go as you can see oil wells now they have a certain amount of production and here to double the production deliver 20, 21 crates of supplies within of engineering supplies within three months if you deliver 84 you can quadruple the production so if you deliver this they will produce a certain amount of oil no matter what you do but if you produce all that in the chain you get the engineering supplies back to these guys you will actually increase their production making you more money so it's all a chain going round and round and round now, one uh, impact of the day length uh, increase that I have, by the way, is that, uh, well, you could call it a little bug because uh, these guys, these uh, new GRFs, don't know anything about it. And they don't actually use the in-game ticks to check for this. They actually use days. So three months is of course for me a whole lot more time. I have eight times as much time to deliver these 21 grades than I would have with a day length factor of one. However, since this is not a really challenge game, but supposed to be fun, I'm not really feeling bad about having an easier time of getting this thing to quadruple production. And let me tell you, at day length factor one, at the normal game, that is actually not that easy to do. And since we're not gonna, well, don't want to have any stress here and also if I manage to do it the more I deliver there it's not gonna go into uh, time 16 production or anything quadruple is the most that you can get 
So as long as I can keep that up, if I can keep it up even faster, that doesn't give me any kind of uh, advantage. That only means I have more engineering supplies spare to deliver somewhere else. But it doesn't change, uh, have any impact on this one. So even if I, whether I happen to uh, manage it with day length factor one or with day length factor eight, in the end, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because the production will be exactly the same, the quadruple production. And the production uh, is adjusted to the day length factor. So it doesn't produce uh, a whole lot less all of a sudden just because my days last longer. No, in, in real time, it produces exactly the same amount. You will get a different uh, uh, production here, of course. They would never produce that much in a month in in a month if the month was shorter. But in real time, it has actually produced the same thing. So the trains, no matter at what day length factor you play, the trains can pick up the same amount of cargo. They just will be will be paid less for that cargo because obviously in the same amount of time they can deliver more cargo but they have the same running costs to balance that out you have to pay less so in the end over the year you make exactly the same profit so that's how, how that works so the only impact on this game is that i have an easier time of getting these supplies to these guys but as i said I'm not really worried about that having uh, much of an impact on the fun that we're having here. Now, why am I telling you all this crap? Well, I was looking at the map trying to figure out where I can actually build up such a chain. And I found something. And it's going to be the steel chain. Now, I find found a nice little steel mill here. And what does a steel mill need? Well, it needs iron ore and coal. And from what I understand, you can either deliver iron ore or you can deliver scrap metal. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Yeah, I think you need... Does it actually work like that? Oh boy, I have to look that up. Either way, um, no matter what you deliver, even if you deliver just one of it, it will produce steel no matter what. Even if you just produce, uh, give it iron ore and you never deliver it any coal, it will, it will produce steel. Let me actually say here, production steps up if two or more cargos are delivered within a month of each other. So that means if I deliver instead of one of these, two and it gets both of them within a month then it steps up so i need to deliver two of those to get this up so i need iron ore coal and scrap metal well we happen to have a uh, scrap yard over here and that produces scrap metal it also needs engineering supplies but we don't worry about that right yet um we have to get the chain going first so I can get that going. And why do, do I want to do that here? Well, we have two iron ore mines over here. I have a coal mine over there. And we have a machine shop over here. So if we deliver this and these two and this one, all what these guys are producing to here, and then we're producing the, uh, delivering the steel to the machine shop, this guy will actually produce engineering supplies that we can deliver to these guys. Probably just to one of these guys because that chain will probably not get this guy going so fast that we can uh, supply four mines with it or four places with it, three mines and one junkyard. But uh, we should at least get the chain going. Whether we can deliver enough within, a, within three months to get this guy to quadruple or double production, I don't know. We'll see. But this is the place where we'll get that chain going. And we're going to start right here. And this guy produced six, uh, hmm, that many tons, huh? I don't know how much time it needs to get down there, but not that much, actually. Well, let's lay the tracks first, shall we? Before we think about stuff like that. we 
go. Oh, I right, did a little bit too much there. How do we get our money back? Uh, one thing that I could also use, uh, I actually have some track planning tracks here, which are actually cheaper, but so far I didn't really need to plan very much. I actually knew where stuff was going. And this time I'm actually gonna use uh, one of these industrial um, platforms. So it starts to look a little nicer here. Let me see, what, what can we actually use here? Drill unloader, valuables, goods, steel mill. Yeah, that comes later. Well, the steel mill station, that we can at least put in here. Um, but we're gonna give it four. There we go. Wow. That looks interesting. Okay. Now what else do we have here? Good station. Raw materials. Farm buildings. Mineral platforms. Wood piles. Cattle farm. No. Still of these. Well, let's actually go for some of these. And what? I'm just gonna use one of these. There we go. And then maybe... No harbor cranes. Yeah, just... Put something right there. There we go. That looks nice. Okay. Get our depot in there and just get a new train. And now we're gonna need to transport. Um, what does this guy produce? Scrap metal. There we go. Okay, that guy. Um, well, we have a four, four length platform. Just get it as long as it gets. Okay. And let me actually delete that guy again. If you control click, it gets a full load order. And we're gonna unload over there. Okay. So that's that. But uh, we want a little more. We wanted to get, where, where are they actually? There's the first one, there. For that one, I'm sure we're having a cool little platform in here. Raw materials. Hmm, coal. Mineral platform. Well, I hope you're not gonna show coal. Because this is not a coal one. Get rid of the uh, there we go. So there should actually be uh, something appearing over here when there's stuff waiting. So uh, let's see how that goes. Um, and I think we don't need another platform for that just yet. Just gonna make a split over here and then put signals. What? Oh boy, we're running out of money. Well, time for fast forward. This is where the fast forward comes in, and we just have to wait 
for guys to make some money back here. Wow, 2,000 Deutschmark just for one signal. But I need it. I need it. Thing is, I need a little bit more than that. I need a whole bunch of track. Okay, I think I'm gonna wait. Oh boy, I think I made a mistake here. Did I put that thing too far away? No, supply scrap metal. And I did refit that thing to... Uh, Tons of coal? What the hell? I forgot to refit that guy. No wonder. Oh boy. Always make that mistake. You have to refit these guys actually to the right kind of... Oh boy, and I can't even afford that. Oh well. Let's wait for a bit. And hopefully this guy is gonna make me enough money to finance the rest of the line okay now again yeah there we go see there's actually stuff appearing there that is waiting to be filled up so once he leaves and that uh, actually isn't picked up anymore that should nice nicely stack up over there so yeah, I'm gonna uh, rework the city stations as well to look a little nicer. There you go. There's the stuff is stacking up. Should actually get more. But uh, I'm not gonna watch that. I wanna see uh, what this guy is doing in terms of profit over here. Oh boy, there's uh, stuff piling up already. It's also trying to distribute that stuff, but because it, we only have one station connected, there's not much where it can go, so... Yeah, 3,000 for one go, that's not bad. Well, let's use the track planning, actually, which is a little cheaper, so we can at least let the layout going here. What does this actually cost? A thousand. Yeah, well, it's a little cheaper. Not that much though. Where where do we actually need to go? Oh wow, that's quite a distance. Still. Oh boy. Can we go past here? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We ran out of money again. I think that will happen a lot for the rest of the year. That we will simply run out of money. But it will be worth it because these trains are gonna make a whole lot of money. These tracks are actually very, very good because you can if you if you're short on money, you can at least get the track layout going already and later you simply uh, convert these with the conversion tool to the actual uh, track that you wanted and yeah we probably want to go past there and then somewhere over here we want to cross over there and do this and there we go as if I had measured it how much do we need Three thousand, and there we go. That train is already paying for this second line here. That should work. Yeah. Wow, we completed the track. Okay. It's a planning depot. Wow, the depot alone will cost me 19,000. I don't even want to know how much the train will cost. But it will be worth it. As you can see, this train is already making a butt ton of money. Phew, 19,000. 
Come on, little train. Daddy needs... Daddy needs a new Cadillac. Oh boy. Well, while this is going on, let's actually scout out the new routes. Okay, there's another one over here. That will be easy to connect up. Probably gonna just make a little passing line over here so these two trains can use the same line. And uh, we need to check whether we need to double it up. Probably not. I don't want to double up lines yet. Uh, as you can see, that costs a whole lot of money. Um, so I'm gonna wait for that. Actually, I can build the train in that depot and just let them go like that. So yeah, I'm not gonna build that depot up there. I'm just gonna convert the line. Actually, by holding control, you can do this stuff diagonally, if you're ever wondering. Not everybody knows that, because that is pretty new, I think. That you can do this kind of stuff diagonally. It's also uh, good for landscaping. When you want to stuff, want to do stuff like this, then uh, for in landscaping, then you don't have to uh, change more land than you actually want to. Okay, the line is finished. Now we need a train. I'm probably not going to be able to afford that. How much is the locomotive going to cost? That's probably the most expensive piece. Uh, 25,000 that's actually not that much you can do that so we should get this train going before the episode is over well, at least I hope so <laughs> now we're gonna make that and then we have the first part of our network going and maybe we can even deliver the stuff in time for that uh, Zilma to put up the production if you might actually um, take that steel off their hands before yeah there we go no no not, in, not quite enough yet there we go and now we need iron ore right and we need to remember to actually convert that guy. Oh boy, how many wagons do we actually need? How many does that have? Let me slow that down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh boy. Eight times seven thousand. Oh my god. Yeah, the wagons are the biggest part after all. And there you can see nicely how it's stocking up here. I actually need another train to pick that up. But I want to get that line going here. I'm probably going to end up needing more than one station down there. Or more than one platform rather. And probably more than one station because uh, you never want to mix drop off and pick up stations. Because, uh, well, let me explain. This guy is going to produce um, metal. So, they actually call it metal instead of steel, whatever. Um, this guy is going to produce metal, but it's only going to produce metal when resources arrive. So now imagine there's actually a train waiting here to pick up the metal and there's another train waiting here to pick up the metal and let's say we have two platforms here now two platforms are blocked by trains waiting for metal that is never going to come because the platforms are blocked meaning no trains can deliver the resources and without resources no metal is ever going to be produced so you have that in all these kinds of platforms and it happens every single time trust me sooner or later you will run into this situation so always keep pick up and drop off stations disconnected they can actually be the same station 
you just have to keep the platform separated. So uh, you can do that with waypoints. You can do that in the way that the uh, platforms are actually not connected to the other uh, tracks. Well, however you do it, you need to make sure that there's always a free platform for goods to be delivered, for resources to be delivered. Okay, now let's see, how many can we buy? Uh, need a few more. As you can see, the money is coming in. Actually, by now I think the loan interest is quite a bit of a... Yeah, quite a bit of a burden. So, uh, we have a 600,000 loan. I think once this uh, entire cargo chain is running, we might actually not uh, spend something for a while just to uh, possibly <coughs> pay off some of that loan. Because it's uh, weighing heavy on our... on our finances here. That's, that's, yeah, not, not very nice if you pay, yeah, 60,000, no, actually this is it. Yeah, it's still nearly 20,000 in loan interest. That's, that's not nice. Okay, one more. And then we still need to refit it. Oh my God. It's already cost, we're gonna cost another time as much. There we go. Okay, now we need to refit you to iron ore. How much is that gonna cost? Okay, as much as one of these guys cost. Yeah, it is now 1921 already. Now the time is actually... Yeah, the train has a few orders. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. He, he's gonna get them right away. There we go. Okay, now. You will go up here. Full load. And then gonna go all the way down here and we're gonna get that up and then skip so you actually find your way and the depot is a nice way for him to actually pass the pass his body here let me actually see whether that is happening using this line temporarily to get this one going so I don't have to buy a depot up there. Need to buy one anyway so this guy can actually service without using this line but uh, for now. And now we need to be cheap. <coughs> Sorry this talking and I'm recording um, these first three episodes in one go so I've been talking for over an hour. Well, no, I'm talking for over two hours, actually. So my throat is actually getting a little sore. As I told you, I have a little cold. So it's time we get this episode over. So let's see whether this is actually going to work. And I think we're going to we're going to see also some nice uh, oh some nice animation of this uh, thing here delivering the. Uh, Materials and now I hope we're gonna see some stuff filling, piling up here. Is that gonna happen? Yeah, there you see stuff is gonna pile up along the tracks. Is stuff gonna pile up over there as well? Yep, that's nice. Cool. Okay, where is it? Now let's see how much money that might make. The distance is actually longer, so. Um, this should pay a little bit more, I hope.
Yeah, 4,000. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, and there we go, folks. This time I'm gonna keep this last episode a little bit shorter because my voice really needs a break. <laughs> so yeah, we have our first parts of our cargo network going. So how far away from our person network are we actually? Oh well, quite a bit, nearly on the other end of the map. But that's good since we don't want to mix those anytime soon. And we're gonna hop back and forth and start expanding both of them. And at some point we're also gonna get some airplanes and some ships going. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see at what point we do that. For now I would say we're gonna leave this running a little while. And then I'm gonna pause it. At about 30,000. When we have that, I'm gonna pause. So we have a nice bit of money to continue our next adventure here. There we go. And with that, I don't know what we're gonna do from here on out. Maybe we're gonna expand the passenger network again a little bit. Or maybe we actually get the first steel train going for our little machine shop down here. We'll see how that is going, or metal train rather, it's called metal in this pack. So we'll see what we're gonna do. But until that happens, my voice desperately needs a break. So I say keep your heads up folks, and I'll see you on the next one.